Hello everyone and welcome back to SRB Gaming. As I said before, this will be a real solar system Kerbal Space Program video and what I'm going to be showing you today is kind of a tutorial how to get to orbit in real solar system without using realism overhaul and let me explain what that means. So realism overhaul is a mod pack that's meant to be used with real solar system and what it does is it uh, remakes all the parts that they function similar to a real life part would. Um, if you don't know, in normal KSP, uh, because the planets are so small, in order to balance that, engines and fuel are extremely heavy, much more heavy than they would be in real life, and uh, what this does is makes it not completely overpowered all the rockets, because if they were normal real life equivalents, um, it would be even easier than it is already to get into orbit. So that means that if you go to real solar system now, not only do you have a normal sized planet, you have underpowered rockets. So realism overhaul fixes that. However, you might not be able to use that. There's a couple of reasons. You might just be too lazy to install the mod pack. You might have a lower end computer, which is what I was dealing with before. Uh, I now have a better one, but so you'll see better graphics now. But uh, realism overhaul includes a lot of mods, so you might have some issues running all of that. And then the other thing is you might just not like all the complexity of realism overhaul because it does add a lot of stuff including uh, cryogenic fuels boiling off some people just don't want to deal with that so if you're one of those people if any of those fit you um, you're gonna wanna know how to get to orbit in real solar system with mostly stock parts now that is not easy so one thing you can do to help is you can install the SpaceX mod by Laztec that is built for uh, real solar system, so it's very overpowered if you use it in the stock game. You can get to Duna on like a Falcon Heavy or something. But anyway, if you use that, you'll have access to both SpaceX rockets and a couple spacecraft, which are balanced for real solar system, and it's only one mod pack, so you don't have to install the whole realism overhaul. That being said, I don't have that here today. Uh, so far on this save, I've managed to get a tiny space station up, rescue one Kerbal, uh, one resupply into orbit that's going to dock soon, and I did a flyby of the moon with a probe. And uh, as you know, getting to orbit is the hardest part. Uh, I, well, not hardest. I mean, it uses the most delta V of anything, of almost anything you're going to do, especially in real solar system. Unless you plan to land on Venus and come back, that uh, you're going to use most of your fuel in uh, getting to orbit, most likely. So let's go to the vehicle assembly building, and I can start this tutorial. So we're just going to launch something simple. I'll go with the probe. Um, this is, the hex core is always good. So obviously you want the basic stuff like power. Um, put one up here. And then a couple on the side. Those are always nice. And remember in the new version, these panels, the ones without casings, you can extend them, you can't close them. I don't really need to close them for this anyway. So let's just do... There we go. Alright, so a couple of batteries are always nice, and uh, this part is obviously pretty standard, but we'll get to the interesting stuff in just a moment. So I'm going to stick a, uh, well if I want to do that I think I need more panels, an ion engine, there we go, okay. So let's put an ion engine on. Now what you need to know about uh, ion engines is in realism overhaul they are built like the real life ones which have extremely small thrust. The ones in KSP are ridiculously overpowered. Look at this. Two kilonewtons of thrust. Okay. That is insane. There, there is no way any ion engine could ever get that much thrust in real life. It's more on the line of millinewtons. So, this is one advantage you're going to have if you don't use realism overhaul. Um, it won't be realistic. If you do want to be realistic with ion engines, I would recommend you can still use them and it saves time. Just don't use them for stuff like orbital insertion because that would be completely uh, unrealistic. So, but anyway, we're going to use this here. And I highly, highly, highly recommend MechJeb for real solar system. It's not cheating. No one, if you think it's unrealistic, no one in real life would launch a rocket by hand anyway. And you kind of need it. So right here we see vacuum delta V, 5,347 uh, 5, meters per second. So that is a lot. 
but in real solar system, that's probably enough to maybe get moon orbit, assuming we can lunar orbit, assuming we can get this entire thing into orbit. And again, like I said, we're not going to be using this engine for orbital insertion, so. Our mass right now is 0.6 tons, that's plenty, that's not very hard to get into orbit. Uh, for your first payload, do something really small like this, but try to make it useful as well. Just don't go over about 5 tons or on your first run or you're going to have a lot of problems. So let's put a stack separator on, and uh, we can get our first uh, engine on. So I'm going to actually add the fairings first. You want to have the smallest fairing area possible because these do actually weigh quite a bit and it makes a difference on your final rocket. So be sure to eject those as soon as you can. So here we have these fairings. And then let's add a upper stage. So just a normal fuel tank here. Again, this fuel is far heavier than it would be in real life. And for the upper stage, you can go with one of these, the Terrier engine. So that's a decent time. 2800. So here's what you want to aim for. 10,000 is about the bare minimum. If you do everything right, 10,000 meters uh, uh, meters per second delta V will get you into a low orbit. However, I always like to go between 11 kilometers per second and 10 kilometers per second because that, uh, if you do that, it really gives you a little margin for error. And uh, as you can see, this is live commentary today. So now that we have this upper stage, here we go, 2800, we need to get the other, uh, what, 7000, a little more than that. Okay, so we've kind of filled this up with the smaller engines, so now we're going to want to move to 2.5 meter engines. Now, you can use a poodle here which would be more efficient, but I like to use the skipper because I absolutely hate waiting four minutes for my... Here, let's look at the times. Take this off, put a poodle. That's no fun. Three minutes and 30 seconds? No. You could actually miss orbit because of that. One minute, 17 seconds? That's a lot better. So combined, we have about six kilometers per second, so we're, we're getting there. Make sure the staging's right. It usually is. Let's put another decoupler. And then... We got to move to the 3.75 meter stages. Um, I do not like to use side boosters unless I absolutely have to, and in real solar system you do have to use them a lot more. But I'm going to try, since it's such a small payload, to avoid using those small boosters. Um, one thing you can do is if you don't want to use one of these 2.5 meter stages, or you just have a bigger rocket, you can use one of these uh, Rhino engines, which is quite efficient, lots of thrust in the vacuum. That's always a good choice. So let's get this engine on here. So now we have 4,400, 3,200, 2,800. That's 10,400. So this this is enough. Um, and then obviously we need to add the fins, and that might reduce the delta V slightly. So let's just stick these on. And yeah, that really didn't change it by much. So we're still good. Uh, they're a little asymmetric there. Let's. There we go. Okay. So this rocket should be able to reach orbit in real solar system, and then building it is obviously the first part. And I'm going to show you how to fly it after this. It's a little different than stock. Um, it's less different now because of the new aerodynamics overhaul, but let's just call this uh, Lunar Orbiter because that is my plan for this. Well, hang on, I'm not going to do a Lunar Orbiter, just a test craft. Because in order to do a, a Lunar Orbiter, you would have to go into the plane of uh, the correct plane, orbital plane, and I would recommend using MechJet for that. Um, again, I don't consider it cheating in real solar system. Definitely use MechJet for that. I'm just going to launch it into a random inclination right now. Because you're launching from Florida, you're not equatorial, and the moon is not equatorial to begin with. So, But I wanted to show you how to do this by hand. So uh, here we are at the pad. Here's a view of where we are, Florida. Uh, there's the rest of the U.S., South America. Uh, here's my two spacecraft that are already up in pretty circular orbits, looks like. And uh, we're going to launch. So put your throttle up and go. So we have liftoff. Uh, thrust to weight ratio is 1.47. That's pretty good. So we're just going to go straight up until we reach about 1,000 meters and when we hit about 100 meters per second on the velocity. Uh, this rocket is fairly aerodynamic. Um, this could be thinner, but 
Uh, it shouldn't be a big issue, and you want to have fins that stick out beyond the width of the fairing. So now we've hit 100 meters per second. Do a tilt, just a little bit. That was actually a little more than I would usually do, and I think I need more struts. Yes, I do. Okay, hold out for there. It should be okay. Um, remember, you're going to want to use your engine's gimbal as your main steering source. I really should have added more struts. Okay, so as long as it's not wobbling, we should be okay without those struts. I generally am. So there's the space center. Uh, for some reason it shows you on an island. I don't think the Kennedy Space Center is actually on an island, but I could be wrong. Uh, it might just be a terrain glitch. It looks pretty bad right now, even though I am on 4K textures. I can't do 8K because I don't want it to crash due to the 32-bit client. But it'll look a lot better once we get higher, and uh, as you can see from really high altitudes, Earth just looks great. So we are here right now. And uh, in on Kerbin, the atmosphere goes up to 70,000 meters. Here it goes up to 130,000 meters. However, after 60 or 70,000, the atmosphere is negligible. I mean, you obviously have to be above it to orbit, but you can eject your fairing by then. And as you can see, we're already out of the thickest part of the atmosphere. So you want to keep turning, keep turning your craft, and get horizontal about, about when the atmosphere ends, 130,000. And uh, this wobbling, again, just adds struts. Um, I really should have done that, but you can manage without it, as long as you stabilize your ship. Gimbling is your friend, use your engines. So as you can see, this stage is coming to a close, but we still have 2 kilometers per second on it, so definitely useful. Uh, we're about ready to switch to orbital mode now. And look at this, we're almost out of the atmosphere. So as soon as that ticker gets out of the dark blue, you can even go with the dark blue, but just to be safe, as soon as it gets into the black zone, deploy that fairing. That will get you more delta V on your upper stages. Here it doesn't matter so much. But yeah, you definitely want to do that. We are in orbit mode. Uh, orbital velocity is approximately 7,700 meters per second. Uh, I don't remember the exact values at lower altitudes, but that is your target. If you ever find that your delta V is less than what you would need to get there, uh, you're going to need to restart your thing. So we're going to deploy the fairing, and here we see our spacecraft. And cuts out. So let's decouple that, and before I do anything else, deploy some of these solar panels. We don't need all of them yet, but I don't want to be stuck without my power, and there's an emergency battery. So here we are. Um, that was a pretty good first stage, but we're going to want to keep going with this. So let's fire up the second stage, tilt the craft a bit more, and start burning. So now that we're at a high altitude, we can go pretty horizontal. Uh, this might not be the most efficient way. I wasn't expecting uh, to get such a high apoapsis that early. Um, but right now you really just want to be raising your orbital velocity, so let's get right along that. Again, remember, 7700 is our target around there. Uh, interesting story, I had tried to launch a space station in a two-stage launcher, uh, space station core with Jebediah on board. Yeah, that didn't really work. Um, the second stage cut out with about 100 meters per second left to achieve orbit, which means it was going to crash in Africa somewhere, I think. Yeah. And, uh, I popped Jeb out of the ship and used his EVA pack to achieve orbit, and then I picked him up in a smaller vessel, which is serving as a much smaller space station core. So we're about to reach 5 kilometers per second orbital velocity. Now, at this point, you'll probably burn up if you re-enter the atmosphere. So this is kind of, if you don't have a heat shield, this is the point of no return. Um, above about 3, because in the heating is pretty underpowered in the stock game. Okay, second stage is cut out. Let's decouple that. Quick save for safety. That's a decent orbital altitude, so I'm just going to use a uh, maneuver node. You, you usually don't have to. You can just keep burning, but this is a good thing to do. So, as you can see by our numbers, we have more than enough to reach orbit. So I'm going to deploy the rest of the solar panels because we have some extra time. And there's our second stage. Here's our third stage. And here are our panels. And note, you cannot retract these. If you want one that you can retract, such as if you have to enter the atmosphere for Mars missions or something, use the uh, ones with the covers. So we're coming up on the burn. Um, the numbers are glitching out here, but 
we can see that our burn's going to be about one and a half minutes. And so we can do a time warp to approximately um, 45 seconds before the burn. But this will bring me to a minute if I do auto warp, so I'm just going to do that. There goes our second stage. There's Florida. There is the United States, Eastern Coast, uh, Cuba. Panels are getting lots of sunlight. That's always good. This green light means the MechJev is active, although I don't know what it's active right now. I guess the Delta V stats. Okay, so we're coming up on the burn. So as usual, we wait for 45 seconds. And activate that engine. Here we go. And I am going to do a time warp if it lets me... Oh, that's not good. Alright. Just to speed this up. Because I don't like waiting when I don't have to. Uh, so, what you will notice in, well, you probably noticed this in Kerbin, but it's even more drastic on Earth. If you are even the shortest amount of Delta V short of your orbit, you will be nowhere near an orbit. Um, like I said, I was 100 meters per second or so short of it last time, and I was crashing in Africa or the Atlantic Ocean. I don't remember. Either way, if you don't get right on it, you are going to have a bad time because it will um, crash somewhere. You won't even be close. You can't just skim the atmosphere. Okay, so we can see that the periapsis is way above 130,000 meters, so we are in orbit, and uh, we have a little bit of fuel left. So this craft is actually, wow, exactly six kilometers per second. That's pretty good. And this is actually capable of getting to Mars, and I believe achieving orbit with this kind of Delta V. I might do that after this video. I think I will do that after this video. See if I can do a Phobos flyby. That'd be cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've seen that uh, you can indeed use real solar system with stock parts. It is just very hard, except for ion engines, which are overpowered. And uh, I hope this helped you get into orbit the first time, and I guess I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.